Hello, my name is Ethan Danahy from the Tufts University Center for Engineering, Education, and Outreach, and I want to tell you about a recent visit I did to a makerspace that was using a laser cutter for educational applications within the classroom. In April, I was able to travel to Barcelona, Spain for the International STEAM Conference. As one of the speakers, I had a great opportunity to share my experiences with the audience around exploring creativity in education, specifically incorporating LEGO Mindstorms robotics into the curriculum, and how we as teachers can do projects that integrate multiple disciplines together simultaneously. This also gave me a chance to highlight some of the benefits of the maker movement, and how makerspaces are being incorporated more and more into educational settings which of course also brings up many questions about strategies for doing this and what tools are appropriate in educational makerspaces, specifically for enabling students to do hands-on project-based learning around the STEAM subjects. As part of the trip and related to the topics I was discussing, I also visited three very innovative schools in the Barcelona area, including one in a neighboring city called Ruby. This school, Liceu Polytechnic, is a small school run by the local community that inhabits an old farmhouse. As part of my visit, they invited me to talk to the secondary school students and faculty about the work we do at Tufts University around using robotics to encourage creativity and innovation. They also gave me a tour of the makerspace facility that they have integrated into their school. Their makerspace is part of the Fab Lab at Schools project, which allows this tiny school in rural Spain to be connected to a great network of educational makerspaces around the world. The Fab Lab at School project has recently been rebranded as part of the Fab Learn initiative from the Transformative Learning Technologies Lab at Stanford University in California. The Fab Learn Lab is an international community of sites and partners from all over the world who are committed to integrating the principles of constructionist learning into formal and informal K-12 education. If you wish to know more about their work, I highly suggest the TEDx talk by Paulo Blickstein from Stanford, who lays out his vision for integration of the making and fabrication labs into schools. But at Liceu Polytechnic, the Fab Learn Lab is being run by Mikel Carreras, a dedicated teacher who manages the makerspace and works with all the teachers in the school to implement cross-curricular activities that leverage the resources within the space and pedagogies promoted by the FabLearn community. As part of my visit, I was fortunate enough to be treated to several student presentations where they showcased their own designs and implementations of solutions to classroom challenges. As the groups presented, I noticed the activities themselves and the students' work consistently incorporating a wide range of curricular details. That is, while the work was based in the STEM disciplines of science, technology, engineering, and math, it heavily leveraged the arts, and not just the fine arts and design-based aspects, but touched on literacy, culture, the social sciences, and history to provide context and scaffolding for the engineering elements the students were engaged. The other thing to note was the almost exclusive use of the laser cutter. While the lab had access to and had previously done activities with other technologies like 3D printers, Lego Mindstorms, Arduinos, etc., almost all the projects that were happening in the moment in which the students were most excited seemed to revolve around this particular technology. The subject that they were researching was the Roman Empire and specifically the impact that Romans and Roman culture had on this particular region of Spain. With that as the context, the students were designing and creating their own inventions, such as these Roman standards, updated for the 21st century to reflect the students' own personalities. This type of work I expected from the lab, simple graphic designs and two-dimensional solutions cut on the laser cutter. However, very quickly I realized this was only the start to how the students were leveraging the lazy laser cutting technology. As the students researched Roman architecture, their designs expanded to three dimensions, implementing larger and more complex structures, and still incorporating the small personalized details, like the school's own insignia that is featured on the top of each column. Here is another 3D model that was designed, cut, and assembled by the students, again, leveraging that laser cutter technology. Together, the students were in the process of constructing an entire model city, and here portions of the outer fortress wall were waiting to be assembled. 
In this case, students had laser cut and assembled the portions of an aqueduct together and were experimenting with different paints and coverings needed to make it water resistant and the wooden model able to transport liquid. Beyond the architecture investigations, the students had also been creating musical instruments and developing their own Roman lyres. The four-stringed harps that they had created were not only tunable, but again incorporated their personal designs. The one I'm holding here, the student had purposely designed in such a way to represent the octagonal shape of an ancient Roman city layout, again combining several concepts together simultaneously. Even while engaged in the process, the students were happy to explain their creations, showcasing not only the final creations, but also the designs and iterations that came before that they had documented in their engineering notebooks. We saw groups actively collaborating and negotiating as they balanced the engineering and design with the historical context and cultural lessons they were learning. Incorporating the science and math more heavily, this particular investigation into ancient Roman pulley systems for lifting weights required the students to pre-plan and pre-calculate their designs and then prove through implementation their predictions. The system on the right is lifting one of the students' laptops. As part of this system, with the exception of the rope, all parts were laser cut. This not only includes the pulley wheels or discs, but also the axles on which they were turning. In this case, the group was struggling to get it to function as desired, in small part to, due to the fact that the laser cut axles that came from flat sheets of wood are square and not round, causing irregular rotational movement. It was clear that the lab was experimenting in two additional directions one in other types of materials, like laser cutting plastic in addition to wood, as well as with custom building systems that could allow students to construct 3D models quickly and easily from their 2D laser cut parts, since in this environment there was such an emphasis on creating structures. Overall, I was really excited and encouraged by what I saw, and the creative, innovative, and personalized use of the tool, the laser cutter, to rapidly prototype and build solutions. The students appeared to learn the laser cutter very quickly, choosing it over alternative tools in the room, although even in instances when others might have been more appropriate. The speed of the machine allowed all students to be actively engaged, even with only one laser cutter in the room. Mostly, I was impressed with the students' spatial reasoning and de their developed ability to create 3D structures from their original 2D designs. And I love that the teachers were implementing truly cross-disciplinary learning experiences. I saw several areas for improvements, especially as students struggled to implement their exact visions due to the need for additional materials or supports, although there were some examples of mixed media and alternative combinations that were also really neat. I personally think that we're going to be seeing a lot more of laser cutting getting introduced into educational makerspaces and classrooms. Already the price of these devices is dropping, like we saw with 3D printers, making it an accessible technology. For instance, a quick search reveals this $450 one online. While the reliability and quality of these cheaper models might not be fully there yet, also much like 3D printers, this trend means that more people will be introducing this as a tool into education. But I worry that the implementations that we'll see won't leverage the full capabilities of changing classroom learning that is possible. And so I hope that examples like I saw here at this FabLearn lab at Liceu Polytechnic will help drive the type of educational experiences that we do want to see. With that, I'd like to extend a big thank you to Liceu Polytechnic School for hosting me for the day. And if you have any thoughts, questions, or comments related to what I've presented here, please feel free to contact me directly. And if you have questions about the school, you can reach Mikkel on Twitter or more information about the FabLearn community or the FabLearn Lab Network of Makerspaces can be found on Stanford's website. Thank you.